the thing is when you go into acting, you don't, no one really tells you how to deal or manage uh, the difficult times when you're between jobs and you're essentially unemployed. I am Boham Uyeko. I'm an actor. I was born in Johannesburg. I lived here for a few years. We actually moved around uh, quite a few places. I spent most of my um, formative years, or fundamental years rather, in, uh, in, in Bloom, growing up in Bloom. I matriculated there, went to, went to varsity there, studied uh, quantity surveying, which is an interesting choice because when I was in, in, in high school, I was one of those kids that just had no idea, you know, what I was going to study when I was done. When school finished, it was, it was a case of like, what am I going to do now? So it was a case of, okay, I need to, your parents tell you, you know, get a real job, go study and get a real job. I don't know if it's a black parent thing or, you know, the issue that where they came from, they struggle, so they don't want to see their kids struggle. Uh, and so it was a thing of, no, you have to get a real job, you know. I struggled with that being forced to sort of think that way, but reluctantly I, I, I went to varsity. Yeah, and then stumbled across quantity surveying and construction management and property development. So those were the, those were the, the options I was looking at. Fast forward to me living and working in Durban uh, and entering Mr. South Africa. I don't know, I, I, I think I saw the competition as uh, um, an opportunity to, to network and meet with people that I wouldn't otherwise have met. Also, just to put myself out there, at the time I really wanted exposure. But again, when I had, when I had moved to Durban, I started taking acting classes. And, and that's really when I decided, okay, this is what I'm, this is what I'm gonna pursue. Um, my first audition was actually a self-tape. I was just coming off the Mr. SA thing. I said, okay, I, I need to get an agent in, in, in Joburg, you know? So I did my research and, and, and picked out, I think, three or four big agents in Joburg, and I sent them emails. You know, I sent my picture, I sent a bio, a little bio I had, you know, just explaining who I am and what I want to do and I, I need representation. And I had attached a, a resume which had, like, no work. <laughs> whatsoever. The only thing my resume had was the training I had done, the classes I had taken and what, you know, I learned in the classes. And I decided that, look, look I'm, I'm just going to take a chance and go to these people's offices. And I remember just rocking up at my agent's office, who is my current agent now, which is MLA, um, Munin Lee Associates. And I'm like, hey, this, you know, this is who I am. I'm looking for representation. The first question they asked me is, have you trained? So I said, look, I haven't studied, I've taken acting classes, I've sent you my email, um, you know, please have a look at it. They told me that at this specific agent agency, it can take up to six months to get a reply from us. Not even a yes or no, just a response. I didn't really have much hope, you know, um, and, and so I left with that. I actually called the other agents that I had approached and they all said, no, no, our books are full, no, we're not taking any new actors. I was actually heading back to Durban. I was about to take, literally on the highway, about to take the, the, the first exit onto the, to the N1 or whatever it is back to um, Durban. And I get a call from my agent saying, listen, uh, Munin, who's the owner of the agency, has looked at your profile and she wants to interview you tomorrow. Can you come through? Yeah, I think after almost a year of auditioning and, and getting not a single job, uh, which was again difficult, um, I eventually auditioned for Zabalaza. And I just remember the audition, I felt some sort of, I was relaxed for some reason. Um, yeah, then when I got the call that I got the job, that was obviously a huge thing. That was my first proper gig. Yeah, I think Zablaza was a huge, huge, huge um, stepping stone for me because I learned so much. Mostly like on the job learning because, you know, you, you step onto the set and you're working with people that you've looked up to. You're working with people that you've watched since you were a kid. Uh, like Baby Kelly, I'm like, wow, this is like, you know, I've seen you since backstage and, you know, now I'm working with you. And you just, what I did, I went into it knowing that I'm going to ask every question I want to I wanna, I wanna know the answer to. I'm going to learn as much as possible. And 
that resulted in me growing as an actor. And what had happened with Zabalaza was that it was coming to an end. Um, Nzanzi Magic was not going to renew their contract for another season. So they came to us and said, listen, we're going we're gonna to cut the show. And they had mentioned a new show at the time. It was called The Contenders, which is, ended up being called Ring of Lies. And uh, they spoke to us about the show. And I, and I was like, no, this, I have to, have to get this one. Yeah, looking back, I, I definitely take the same risk of, of you know, leaving my job and going into acting and pursuing that. I think one thing that I probably would change is I would have studied acting. I think if, if, I, if I had studied acting instead of quantity surveying, I feel like it would have helped me. The thing is, when you go into acting, you don't, no one really tells you how to deal or manage uh, the difficult times when you're between jobs and you're essentially unemployed. Because as an actor, when you're working, you're working, but as soon as that job finishes, you're unemployed. You know what I mean? So I experienced like a six month gap between, I think, the first season of Istunzi and the second season of um, Ring of Lies. There was a gap there where I wasn't working, so that was difficult to deal with. And those are the kind of things that I, looking back, it would have been nice to be sort of prepared for that. It's crazy to, to think that I, I, get to get pay, I get paid for what I do, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I definitely would have taken the risk again. I definitely would have made the same decision. And I would encourage everyone to, to pursue their dreams, you know, no matter how sort of bleak or risky it seems. But then again, you know, life, as, as, as life happens, you learn, you know, as you go.